say he one of them ghetto boys in the bush way. That's the mentality that keep niggas sick. Come on, dog. You think you're a pit? You meant to grow here, and that's what you pick? Don't worry about me, nigga. See, that is your problem. You always run to your mouth. Remember what mom had that electric problem? Did you help her out? Dewan died, nigga. Doobie died, nigga. Cussy died, nigga. Debo died, and you could have been with him if you didn't make it out that job by. Remember when you. What it do? It's your boy Chimmy the Jittle, man, and we back with another. Man, y'all already know what time it is, man. We got El Bozolero, Bozolero, or Bozolero. Dissolve hundreds of human bodies in acid for cartel. So, you know what I'm saying? What I'm starting to notice is cartel got everybody. You know what I'm saying? Hitman, uh, regular people, like regular straight killers. You know what I'm saying? Uh... People to burn, like, you know what I'm saying, the, the acid, you know what I'm saying, the, you got the people that put the people in acid, that's a different breed of people, dog, you know what I'm saying? This video is for In January 2009, Santiago Meza Lopez was arrested by... Oh, that's how you say his name right there, hold on, go back. Meza Lopez was arrested in January 2009... Santiago Meza Lopez was Santiago. arrested by Mexican forces in the Baja season. Oh, so Santiago ain't El Pozo. Pozo Lero or Yero. Because I said L is like Y or something, right? I'm, I know I might be mistaken. But, oh, he said two L's. I believe. So Pozo Lero. Pozo Lero. El Pozo Lero. This hotel in Ensenada. Mm. He was allegedly cooking seafood when the troops apprehended him and was too intoxicated to run. His crime? Well, let's say that seafood wasn't exactly his specialty. Mesa has been out <laughs> El Pozolero. Well, let's say seafood wasn't his special territory. Bro, you better chill out, boy. After the traditional Mexican meat and vegetable-based stew, pozole. Mesa's secret ingredient? Human bodies. That's right. The corpses dissolved in tubs of acid. Breaking Bad style. Before we enter into specifics, don't... I think I lost my appetite. <laughs> don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You know right. the deal. Like, comment, and subscribe to the brother, so man. Carry on sharing cool content like this. Subscribe. Oh, and perhaps refrain from any soup or stew throughout the video. Santiago Meza Lopez, a.k.a. El Pozolero, began work Pozolero. with the Arellano Felix cartel in 1996. He started off doing masonry work and taking care of the cartel's horses. Eventually, he got caught up in the drug scene, converting into a dealer. Before long, his loyalty and dedicated work ethic earned him the promotion to drug office keeper, in charge of the surveillance of the drug cartel's depots around Tijuana. At this point, the Arellano Felix cartel was embroiled in a fierce war with the rival Sinaloa cartel. The cartels were fighting over control. Wow. I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? In the fight with, you know, El Chapo and them. You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute. Let me go back a little bit. This is all crazy right now. You know what I'm saying? You know. He started off doing masonry work and taking care of the cartel's horses. Eventually, he got. I think it started off as a busboy watching horses. Got caught up in the drug scene, converting into a dealer. Before long, his loyalty and dedicated work ethic earned him the promotion to drug office keeper, in charge of the surveillance of the drug cartel's depots around Tijuana. At this point, the Arellano Felix cartel was embroiled Felix. in a fierce war with the rival Sinaloa cartel. The cartels were fighting over control of drug routes into the U.S., involving shootouts, kidnappings, assassinations, and raids, Ooh, which, according no. to the Mexican Commission of Human Rights, cost the lives of over 24,000 people, too many of whom were innocent. Throughout the 90s, the Felix Arellano cartel usually disposed of bodies by dumping them into sewers and rivers. But the high risk of discovery by the police, combined with the logistical awkwardness of the procedure, 
gave incentive to look for other means of corpse disposal. In 1996, the Ariano brothers brought in some hardened foreign criminals to offer their insight. Their solution? Stop! Big banks are lying to you. They don't want you to know that you can now get a PPP loan in as little as 60 turning corpses into human sludge and grinding oh, the residual no. bones down to dust. Why? Because it's cheap, quick, relatively easy to do so. And perhaps most appealing of all, leaves little to no DNA trace. With that, drug lords Efrain Perez and Jorge Arellano Felix requested Mesa Lopez, their devoted henchman, to witness a little experiment. Mesa was asked to toss a leg of beef into a drum. The container was filled with a solution of lye, also called caustic soda, mixed in with water and some other chemicals. He was told to watch over the meat for a few hours, stirring it here and there until the meat was completely dissolved. After six months, he was recalled for another experiment. This time, the solution was tested with a human corpse. Efrain Perez had also ordered more henchmen to observe the experiment and train, as it were. The dead victim was undressed and forcibly jammed into a drum until his whole body was submerged in 200 liters of the corrosive solution. The glass burner was cranked up. I got a question. Uh, you might be like, well, uh, what is it, dear sir? Well, uh, how did this man that's talking know all this. You know what I'm saying? Is that a question y'all ask yourself when y'all watch this video before I reacted to it? Like, nigga, how you know all this? You know what I'm saying? Let's keep going. Up until the drum's content frothed up into a scarlet colored foam and left overnight to cook. By the morning, the men regrouped to discover that the corpse had been reduced to a gloopy solution of human slop with sunken bone fragments coating the bottom of the barrel. Crazy. A pickup truck later collected the drum, which was then tossed into a nearby canyon under the cover of the night sky. Three months later, Mesa was put in charge of the next operation, and the rest... So they were just throwing him in operations. They were like, all right, yeah, do this. Like, do this, do this. You know what I'm saying? So they were just throwing him in there like, like they doing jump rope, and they like, hey, man, get in there, man. It's your turn, man. He got to try to jump in. He jumping in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Mesa became the cartel's chief corpse disposer. Without any protest and completely desensitized to the nature of his profession, Mesa had gone from a humble stable boy to a barbaric soup master of one of the world's deadliest criminal organizations. The way mm. he saw it, he was just doing a job. He'd right. run to the stores and stock up on oil barrels, caustic soda, latex gloves, and gas masks. When a fresh corpse was due for delivery, his bosses would give him a call indicating the pickup location and time. Once he arrived at the meeting spot, several cars would pull up, and he'd be notified which one was driving the corpse either through another call or a flash of the blinkers. Then, with the help of two other henchmen, the bodies were carted off, dissolved in barrels, picked up, and... Crap. All right, guys, if you've been injured in a car accident, you have to check this out. So I just got this check from my attorney for... Thrown Crazy. into underground pits scattered across Baja, California. The bodies took 24 hours to dissolve. Meso's main boss was the ruthless kingpin Teodoro Garcia Simental, dubbed El Tio. In 2008... A deep rift between El Tio and the Ariano Felix brothers led to the former's decision to switch sides and join the Sinaloa cartel, allying mm. himself with El Chapo. El Tio brought Mesa with him. The soup master was now stewing the followers of his former employees and working for people he once liquefied. He kept his attractive wow. side of 600... Just imagine you gotta work with... <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. dollars a week. His macabre and turncoat career came to an end in January 2009. Mexican federal agents were able to track him down thanks to an anonymous tip-off on January 25th. Anonymous tip. Somebody ratted. <laughs> oh, I best believe they got him, too. Anonymous tip. 
Just imagine who he was thinking about as soon as he heard an anonymous tip. Oh, man. A press release revealed Bezo to the public. He confessed to stewing over 300 corpses and apologized to the relatives of his victims, insisting he was just a man doing a job, not a drug dealer, nor a killer, and certainly not a monster. After his arrest, he also collapsed... Let me tell you something. He might have not been a killer, because they was already dead when they came to you, but you dissolved the bodies. You know what I'm saying? People can, you know, go to the funeral. You know what I'm saying? Need a body. Ooh. But you dissolved them, so you definitely part of the crime. Let's keep going. In tears and pleaded for God's forgiveness. The victim's relatives later stated that his apology was not followed up with genuine willingness to relieve their suffering. He allegedly refused to cooperate with the identification of the victims and would not provide the location of their remains. Presumably unwilling to rat on the cartel and right. risk his own life. But without his cooperation, the procedure's effect on DNA retrieval, the identification of the remains, stands as an impossible task. The victim's relatives await justice. They are often just the family members of the drug war's innocent casualties. Mere No, just imagine, bro. You got a family member you never seen ever again, like they went out that door, and you never seen them again. And you're never going to see them again. Why? Because they dissolve. Crazy. Honest, you wouldn't know that, though, but you just like... And lust for power. Yet they live with the deep wounds of loss and the impossibility of reconciliation. Excavations over the past decade have shocked the world to the magnitude of the disposal process and the number of cartel victims. In 2017... A dig in a rural house in the outskirts of Tijuana, along the highway to Tecate. You know, see, that's all he's saying, bro. I keep telling the homies, man. Like, be like, hey, bro, let's go to Tijuana. Nah, I'm cool, brother. You think it's a joke out there? <laughs> no, sir. I won't be going out there, my friend. No, sir. I ain't about to come back missing. Well, I ain't gonna come back if I'm missing. Resulted in the recovery of 16,500 liters of organic material found in a mass pit, along with 170 kilograms of bone fragments. This site, notoriously dubbed as the Chicken Coop, was where Meso worked for a year and a half. The remains of a... At least 200... And 40 victims lay here, with some estimates God going up to man. 650 victims. Other excavations have uncovered more pits filled with human remains, severely God undermining man. Meso's estimate of 300 victims. Indeed, in one month alone, Meso could liquidize upwards of 30 corpses, and Meso was in the stewing trade for an astounding 13 years. In 2015, Meso was given a prison sentence for involvement in organized crime and illegal deprivation of freedom. Earlier, his only charge was the possession of illegal firearms. During this time, he has completed a primary education and has learned to write. A formal sentence addressing the true extent of his crimes has yet to be passed. What are your thoughts on the stew master? What fate does he deserve? Is he a bad hombre or just a poor man who got sucked into a bad game? Share your opinions in the comments section below and don't forget the big question. Do you think Santiago Mesa Lopez is worth the hype? Look at this. Everything gonna pop up. It's probably because I'm on a playlist. Anyway, uh, I should have been already reacting to this. So y'all should see this before this video. Anyway, uh, the video, uh, uh, let me go back, matter of fact. Right here. Let me know y'all thoughts on the video, man. You know what I'm saying? El uh, Pozo Lero. Lero. Let me know your thoughts, man, because 
always watch stuff like this on like, you know what I'm saying, TV shows. Like I think it was one dude on the show called Blacklist that was like dissolving bodies and stuff. And he tried to do it to the, uh, what's her name, Liz, I think in the show. But uh, OG came and saved her life, you know what I'm saying. But besides all that, just to know it's real is kind of crazy, man. You know what I'm saying. Whew. Yeah, let me know what y'all thoughts on this, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure y'all comment, comment, comment. Y'all ain't understand. I said make sure y'all comment, 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 man. It's your boy Chum the General. Guess what? I'm out. <laughs> Figured out she was playing board games on my chest. I feel sorry, sight. I don't care if she was in trouble, pipe. Saying yes, she loved a tan. Lying said she loved a man. Her name should be Spider because she loved a win. Had me guessing from the top of my dome like headbands. Everything was really good. I thought we really had a plan. I didn't understand, but it's alright. Some things you gotta learn. I think she was a bird, but I had to learn myself. The only way I'ma find out is when I have money and wealth. She said she leaving because she thought I had love for somebody else. She, she left, left me in the cold. She, she left, left me in the cold.